Many today think that the symbol of the cross has power. They believe that the the symbol of the cross can even save them or bring a blessing to them. We see Hollywood stars, we see people wearing crosses around their neck and live like the devil. And uh, even in Satanism, they use the cross as this, a symbol of power. They take the cross and turn it upside down and all kinds of crazy things. But the symbol of the cross has no power to save. If anything, it's a symbol of witchcraft. It's the T, the T for Tammuz, and uh, the Roman soldiers on their shields. There was a T on the shield of the Roman soldiers when they were going to battle, and uh, that was. That was witchcraft. And in a lot of ways, if you think about it, a T or a cross is uh, makes you a target. <clears throat> but whose target are you? Well, you're the devil's target. And there's a lot of people today that are hanging crosses around their necks and you see... Even uh, people that mean well, that are saved, born again, put crosses on their steeples and crosses on their pulpits and not understanding Jesus was not crucified on a T. That's a lie of the devil. He wasn't crucified with his arms stretched out. He was crucified on a tree. His hands were nailed above his head, one nail through both hands, one nail through both feet. That's how he was crucified. And this T, or this cross today, is a curse. Cursed is the man that hangeth on a tree. But this T, uh, this cross today that people think that has to do with Jesus is nothing more than witchcraft. And multitudes today believe that the symbol of the cross is somehow godly, that it is somehow uh, a religious symbol of something that makes you receive a blessing from God. Have you ever noticed that the Catholics will will actually make a cross before they pray? And they do it on people's foreheads, make a cross on the for the Pope the Pope will make a cross on people's foreheads when they're receiving the communion or whatever. People understand that's that could very well be the mark of the beast. The cross, that T, that X, that's not anything to do with Jesus Christ. Jesus was crucified on a tree. One tree. Stuck down in the ground. Not something that has a cross or a T across the, the tree. Did Jesus need to stretch out his arms in the physical realm for people to know that he loved them? I don't think so. Because it comes by faith. So just by seeing Jesus stretching out his arms, and it was, oh, it was needful for Jesus to be crucified so his arms are stretched out so that you know that he's saying, come to me, I want to hold you, I want to accept you. No. No, it's by faith. It's faith. You believe by faith. God has to reveal the truth to you. Has to be revealed to you. 
you can't come to Jesus on your own. You can't believe on the gospel all by yourself. It takes the Lord to give you faith to believe. It takes a revelation from the Lord. It takes, uh, you've heard the song, uh, I saw the light. Well, you don't see the light lest God shines the light, lest the light is shined upon you from the gospel, from the truth of God's word, through the gospel message. It's an act of the Holy Ghost to reveal the cross, to reveal the truth. There's a lot of people today that have a form of godliness, a bunch of religious people today, and tons and tons of religious people today that say they love Jesus and they name the name of Christ, but they don't depart from iniquity. They don't leave sin. And they're the ones that have got crosses around their necks and they're singing songs about Jesus and it's nothing but witchcraft, people. I would say 99% of what's going on in this earth today is nothing but witchcraft and it's being done in the name of Jesus Christ. It's witchcraft. It's not true. It's not real. It's the devil. It's the serpent. Today, a symbol right on the hospitals. The serpent on a cross. Are you listening? You don't think the devil wants the world to believe that it was the serpent? That Jesus was actually that serpent? Because in the Old Testament, right? Held up the serpent and all those people that had been bitten, they were healed. It wasn't the serpent being held up that made them whole. It was having faith and obedience in what God told them to do. That's what made them whole. Yeah, God could have told them to hold up a rock and they, they would have been made whole. Why did God choose to have them hold up the serpent? Because it was the thing that bit them. Those serpents was God's judgment. And God said, hold them up. Hold them up. And they were, he said, every, every, it says everyone that looked upon those, that serpent that was up in the air was healed, was made whole. Why? Because God said, do it. Faith and obedience. It's that simple. So, so today, the devil's trying to twist that. Trying to get people to believe. And the medical, uh, pharmacists, the hospitals use that symbol of a serpent on a cross. Twisted around a cross. That's the delusion, the strong delusion. You have people today that call themselves Christians, are born again, blood washed, and instead of trusting in Jesus to heal their body, they run to the doctors, they run to the hospitals. The word pharmacist is pharmakia, which is witchcraft. What do you think the hospitals push? Drugs, which is sorcery. Most of your doctors and your nurses today in the hospitals are witches and warlocks by night. That's what they do, people. They do blood rituals, blood sacrifices. And some of these people that are dying in the hospitals are being uh, sacrificed to Satan. Right in the hospitals, they're doing blood rituals and sacrifices. People dying... Uh, that weren't supposed to die. Why do you think they give radiation to people? And most of them, most of the patients that get radiation die of cancer. Think about it. Their hope is that they're going to survive because they're being given that radiation. And the percentage of the people that do survive is very low. But think of all the money they're making on that radiation treatment from the family that's paying for that radiation treatment and yet this blood sacrifice is still being committed. That's right. It's time to expose the real lie, the real darkness that's going on in this world. The biggest, most 
wealthiest industry in the whole world is the medical. And then along beside that is the insurance for the medical. All working together, insurance companies and the medical or the hospitals, it, it all works together, people. It all works together. One big empire of witchcraft. And you're the sacrifice. The people are the sacrifice. And even God's people are being deceived today. Now, I'm talking about people that are filled with the Holy Ghost, people that are God-fearing people going into the hospital for cancer treatments instead of looking unto Jesus Christ to heal their bodies. He created your body. He can't heal it. Jesus said when he comes, will he find faith on the earth? Listen, this is where you get in trouble as a minister is when you start preaching against witchcraft. Start dealing with the real uh, truth. Say, anything that is not of faith is sin. And so when you trust in doctors and go to the hospitals, you don't believe God. Can God use a doctor? Can God use? Yeah, he can. But don't turn around after the, you go to a hospital or a doctor and say, oh, thank God that he healed me. Thank God that, he, that God used that doctor. You know, give, give the man the credit if you want to. But if you're going to give Jesus Christ the credit, why don't you go to Jesus Christ to heal you in faith and give him all the glory? Amen? You're not going to be popular as a minister today if you speak against those that are trusting in doctors and in, in hospitals and pharmacia and witchcraft and sorcery. Go into the church and preach against sorcery and witchcraft and pharmacia and medication. A lot of God's people are on medication today. A lot of people today are under the spell of witchcraft, under the spell of sorcery. You know, my pastor went to a doctor one day. He said, he said, he said, sir, he said, those pills you give to people, do they really help them? You know what the doctor said to my pastor? He said, Reverend, he says, we give these pills to the people in hopes that they help them. But we have no guarantee that they're going to help them. We're finding out most of the pharmacia today that's being uh, promoted over the television, we're finding out months later, usually sometimes years later, but you find out the that it actually is being banded now and it's actually being the the um, the government is actually saying it's it's being recalled or it's no longer allowed and it's illegal now and and then you got these lawyers that are coming out and saying if you took this certain drug um, and you got these side effects or if you know then you can take them to court now just listen to what the disclaimer is on the commercial when they talk to you and tell you we have the cure for your problem now but these are the side effects I remember one was uh, uh, they were selling a pill for people that have a problem with depression but the side effect was suicide now you think about that with me be a thinking a rational person now you've got a problem with depression but you're going to take a pill that has the side effect of committing suicide? Does that even make sense, people? You're going to take a pill that's going to possibly make you want to kill yourself. And it's supposed to help you with depression. That's just par for the course. The murderer, the devil... He's a murderer from the beginning. He comes to, for no other reason but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Jesus said, 
You are of your father the devil. He said the same works that he does.